The Browns have made several roster moves. We're going to break it all down on today's video. We're also going to check out the possibility of trading for Hassan Reddick after the star pass rusher requested a trade. So a lot to get to on today's video. But I love to look at the YouTube analytics, as you all know. And we are getting demolished by the Bengals Breakdown, a channel of chat sports that's not even half the size as the Browns report, but they are taking it to us this month in subscribers. Remind them who the best team in the state of Ohio is. Hit the sub button down below. Lock yourself in for the best free Browns content out there. First up on today's show, I want to run through the latest roster moves after the first preseason game. Whenever you're watching the preseason game and you see a guy make a mistake, sometimes your knee-jerk reaction is like, oh, he's going to get cut. And then you realize, no, it's just a preseason game. I'm overreacting. No, you're not overreacting. Uh, the Browns made a handful of moves after that preseason loss to the Packers. They waived running back John Kelly, who had the fumble, if I remember correctly. They also had to make room for Nick Harris, who was traded over from Seattle, which we talked about on yesterday's video, so go watch that if you missed it. They made a couple other additions in the secondary, moving on from Vincent Gray, who got nicked up in the loss. Uh, defensive end Marcus Haynes, who was only added five days ago, was released. This is your typical roster shuffle for spots 80 to 90. So that's the latest on the roster front. As for some injury news going into this week of practice, which by the way, will feature joint practice with the Minnesota Vikings who come to town for a preseason game. Jerry, Judy, and Shelby Harris returned to practice, which was great to see. Watching the connection between Watson and Judy grow, and then Shelby Harris get back on the field because Dalvin Tomlinson is out for a good stretch of time. Juan Thornhill also back on the field. So a lot of good news right here. Got some bad news. David Bell, who suffered a knee slash leg injury in the loss, is week to week, according to Kevin Stefanski. I don't think he can afford to be week to week, which stinks for him because he's definitely fighting for a roster spot. And then linebacker Jordan Hicks, also week to week. Uh, not really sure how that injury popped up. Doubt is from the preseason game, uh, which I don't believe he even played in. So hopefully these two guys won't miss too much time. But yeah, what's new? More injuries for the Browns. Uh, as for some injury news we don't have that I would like to have, I would love a Jack Conklin, Jed Wills update. I mean, the media does ask Kevin Stefanski in his press conferences, what's the latest on those two? And Stefanski always says, when they're ready, they're ready, which is just a whole bunch of nothing. Jack Conklin was on the field today during practice. He was just walking around with the guys. He was not participating whatsoever. But that was the first time we saw him on the field. So I got to think that's a good positive step. Or maybe he just wanted to get outside a little bit. But still, we are approaching the middle of August. We've been in training camp for, what, three weeks now? I would like to get some good news on these two. I know we're still a month away from the Cowboys game, but, yeah, the panic meter, it, it's starting to trickle up a little bit. I'm starting to try to find the panic button in all of my drawers at home. That's where I'm at with these two right now. I just want to know where that button is so I can press it in two weeks if they're still not off the pup list. Now, some updates on the quarterback here, Deshaun Watson. He will play in the Browns preseason finale in Seattle next week. That would be week three of the preseason. He will not play this upcoming weekend against the Vikings. The Browns are going to have Watson be a full go for the joint practice against the Vikings, which a lot of times when teams organize joint practices, they view that as their preseason game. So they put their starters out for the joint practice, but then they pull them back for the actual game itself. So this is nothing abnormal or surprising, but I'm very excited to see Deshaun Watson return for that preseason finale. I feel like he should play. We have not seen him play since the Ravens game in November, and I don't think it would be the wisest idea to have Deshaun Watson's first time back on an NFL field after missing the last seven months be against Micah Parsons and the Cowboys defense. Like That, to me, screams like, we really regret that. So, what do you think about starters in the preseason? Should teams sit the st starters, or should they play them? Give me a yes if you think they should sit them. Give me a no if not. I think starters should play at some point in the preseason with the exception of like Tom Brady in year 15. So 98% of starters at some point should go out there. I just think it's important because from year to year, there's always some change, whether it's a new play caller, someone new in the huddle. And what you don't want to have happen is 
for the first time in the huddle in the regular season. Guys are getting familiar with one another, learning the cadence of the quarterback, and that leads to some early miscues. I love to see those miscues get wrinkled out in the preseason. Give me a false start in August over September because the quarterback and center are getting familiar with one another, and they weren't really on the same page when it came to Sunday. Now, next up on the show, we're going to talk about potentially trading for Hassan Reddick. Did the Browns desperately need a pass rusher? No. I also didn't think they needed a wide receiver. And then they made a trade offer for Brandon Ayuk. So this is the world we're living in. Andrew Barry's a trade addict. We're going to feed into his addiction. But first, I want to tell everyone watching about our great sponsor today, which is Mando. Now, I travel a lot, and something that really helps me simplify the packing process is Mando's 4-in-1 Acidified Cleansing Bar. It's a 5-ounce bar that does the work of shampoo, face wash, body wash, and deodorant. You can also use it to create a rich shaving lather. So technically, it's a 5-in-1. It's also clinically proven to control odor for 24 hours. This simplifies your hygiene routine, and it's the only thing you really need to pack, giving you extra room to pack other items. Mando is offering new customers $5 off their starter pack as well at shopmando.com with promo code CHAT. Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, plus free shipping. Now, like I said, I've got a discount code for the Dog Pound to get you guys hooked up on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers can get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code CHAT. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you use code CHAT at shopmando.com. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Go check them out today. Now, let's talk about Hassan Reddick because there has been some developments in what is the worst run franchise in the NFL, possibly, the New York Football Jets. Um, Hassan Reddick, if you don't know the timeline, was traded from the Eagles to the Jets on April 1st and has requested a trade today. He has not played a snap for them. He has not shown up to a single thing, did not go to OTAs, didn't go to minicamp, didn't even go to like media day where they take your picture for your headshot that year. No, nothing at training camp. He's getting fined $50,000 each training camp practice he misses. Why is he doing all this? Well, because back when he was on the Eagles, before he even got traded to the Jets, he was vocal in public about seeking an adjustment or an extension in his contract as he enters the last year of a three-year $45 million contract. The Jets somehow didn't do their homework on Hassan Reddick, traded for the guy, let their own pass rusher walk, by the way, which we'll get to in a moment, and now find themselves in a really tough situation. Now, shortly after Hassan Reddick requested a trade, according to Jordan Schultz, the Jets released this statement. We have informed Hassan that we will not trade him, that he is expected to be here with his teammates, and that he will continue to be fined per the CBA if he does not report. Since the trade discussions back in March, we have been clear, direct, and consistent with our position. Our focus will remain on these guys we have here as we prepare for the regular season. Let me just take 60 seconds here to talk about the Jets. They're an absolute joke. Hassan Reddick was very public and very clear that he wanted a raise or a contract extension. He signed a three-year, $45 million deal with the Eagles. He vastly outperformed that contract. He's turning 30 in the last year of his contract. No surprise, he wants some type of raise. Somehow the Jets didn't know that he wanted an extension when they traded for him, and that's been documented. And now they find themselves in a tough situation where they traded for a guy who wanted an extension. They don't want to extend him, and he is holding out. So... That's just 60 seconds of the New York Jets being the New York Jets. But let's bring the Browns into the mix for a moment. Andrew Barry sniffed around Brandon Ayuk when none of us really thought he'd be interested. I mean, how many of us, and myself included, and I don't mind going deep down rabbit holes of Browns, rumors, and theories, and conspiracies, thought Andrew Barry and the Browns would be in the mix or one of the final teams for Brandon Ayuk. 
I, I didn't hand up. No. So should we just rule out the Browns for Hassan Reddick? I would say not. Like we should at least learn from our previous mistake of not exploring Brandon Ayuk more to say we should explore Brandon. We should explore Hassan Reddick. So when you look at the Browns' defensive line, I mean it's definitely not in dire need of another pass rusher. They re-signed to Darius Smith. Alex Wright took a big step forward in his second season. Okoronkwo was an awesome rotational pass rusher. They've got a young guy in Isaiah McGuire, uh, fourth-round draft pick from last draft, 2023. Quentin Jefferson, Shelby Harris, Maurice Hurst, all free agent signings. The Browns have made a lot of additions to their defensive line, and not cheap ones either. But when you look at Hassan Reddick, it's hard not to be tempted. I mean, look at the numbers he's put up the last four years. 11 sacks, 16 sacks, 11 sacks, 12 and a half sacks. Since 2020, Hassan Reddick is fourth in sacks in the National Football League. Miles Garrett is second. Like, you could have the second and fourth sack leaders on your team, along with the rest of the cast and crew, like Zadarius Smith and Okoronkwo. And this would be what already is, in my opinion, a top three defensive line. A no-brainer, the number one defensive line of football. Maybe you put Hassan Reddick at outside linebacker, and you get Garrett, Reddick, Smith, Okoronkwo, and Tomlinson all on the field at once. It's hard not to have your tail wag a little bit and thought about it. Now, I don't think Andrew Barry is going to pursue Hassan Reddick. It's not apples to apples between Reddick and Ayuk. I mean, ignore the positions. One's 25. One turns 30 in a month. So from an age standpoint, we know Andrew Barry is a little bit of a Leonardo DiCaprio. He likes him young. So I don't think he'll be pursuing a 30-year-old outside linebacker. But, man, 11 sacks being dangled in front of you. If I had to make a short list of GMs who at least pick up the phone and call and inquire, you know Cleveland's calling. So I thought we could at least discuss the possibility since we are somewhat blindsided by the Brandon Ayuk. I don't want to be blindsided by a San Reddick trade if that were to happen. So I'll turn it over to you to kind of wrap up the video a little bit. Would you trade for Hassan Reddick? The Jets gave up a conditional third-round draft pick. They're not going to get that back if they have to trade because word's out, right? They have lost a lot of leverage since Reddick requested a trade. So maybe the Browns call and say, listen, you lost a third, cut your losses, and we'll give you a fourth. We'll give you a fifth. And sure, you're going to come out looking pretty dumb, but you'll look a lot dumber if you don't get anything at all. So... That And then also, if you do trade for Hassan Reddick, you have to extend him. Otherwise, you are the next New York Jets, right? You traded for a guy that wants an extension that you didn't know about. And maybe the Browns would extend him, but if they didn't want to extend Amari Cooper, I got a tough time believing they're going to want to extend Hassan Reddick. So definitely put this at that one Bernie head possibility of happening, but it's Andrew Barry. It's trades. That's his addiction. He's never quite out of it. All right, before we let you guys get on out of here, I want to show some love to the Brown and Orange Club. Those of you during our watch party on Saturday that sent in a $50 super chat, Tim Green, Mike Dibble, Jeremy Stallman, Slow But Sure, David Botner, thank you guys so much for going above and beyond to support this channel. And if you want to be a part of the Brown and Orange Club and get some shout-outs for the entire 2024 season, Hang out with us during our watch parties, $50 Super Chat, or I guess a $50 Super Thanks. There's really no difference. And we'll show you some extra love for supporting us here if you're able to. If you can't, no problem at all. Make sure to like and comment each video as much as possible. That really helps support the channel as well. All right, let's pick a card to wrap up today's video. We got producer Matthew Goldman hanging out with us today. Mr. Goldman, which card do you want to go with? Let's go with a Four of Hearts. Four of Hearts? Okay. Okay, I like it. You don't mind it, okay. I'm going to go with the Queen of Diamonds. Nah, we're nowhere near it. Nine of Spades. Nine of Spades. All right, that will do it for us on today's show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll catch up later.